Hurry, hurry, hurry! Your father is going to start honking that car any minute now. Mother is still packing the rest of little Richard's diapers, while I still have to find where I put my tablet charger. Father's got all the luggage in the back, and already in the driver's seat, impatiently reading the vacation brochure for the hundredth time now. Any minute now, everyone is going to start yelling, and I'll have to leave without my tablet. How will I make it the whole six-hour road trip to California without reading or watching something? Mother pokes her head in the room. Are you done packing, Emma? Almost, I yelled. I rummaged under the bed, finding everything I ever lost in my entire life except for that charger. This trip is going to be the worst. Finally, when I hear father losing it outside after an hour of waiting in the car, I decided to let it be and head it out. I crossed my arms and sat in the back seat while looking out the window as the car rolled out of the garage onto the street. Little Richard was pulling my hair already. Are you too excited? Father looked at me as if I was two years old like Richard. Sure, I said sarcastically, waving my hands in the air. Don't worry, Emma. We'll be making sandcastles on the beach before you even know it. Take a nap, Mother advised. Not a bad idea, actually. Won't have to worry about Richard bothering me. It had been 10 minutes and we had drove through a few blocks now when Mother yelled, Stop the car. We have to go back to the house. <coughs> now what? Father shrugged. I forgot to get barf bags. Father turned the car around to get the most important item for our road trip, barf bags. How could mother forget? Going on a road trip is lots of fun, especially if you like to travel. And for longer distances, those train or airplane rides are even more special. Except if you're one of those who feel dizzy or sick to your stomach, until... <clears throat> Motion sickness makes traveling a lot less fun for you and for the people around you. Motion sickness, known as kinetosis, is that dizzy, tired, and nauseous feeling many people get when they travel. Depending on what exactly you're traveling on, it may be called car sickness, or sea sickness, or even air sickness. Did you know about one out of every three people is affected by motion sickness, even in mild conditions? And when the weather is bad, like a storm at the sea or turbulence in the air, two out of every three people are likely to suffer from motion sickness. But sometimes though, you make it through the whole ride, thinking you've gotten over motion sickness, and it doesn't happen to you anymore. And you're used to it now, just until it's a few minutes away from the final stop and you find yourself covered in barf. Worst feeling ever. So why does motion sickness occur, and can you really overcome it? Let's first understand what causes this nauseous feeling whenever we get cozy in our car seats. Kinetosis is caused by a disconnection between your brain and the other parts of your body that sense movement. Particularly, it's your inner ears that help control your sense of balance. They are part of a network called the vestibular system, which includes three pairs of semicircular canals and two sacs called the saccule and the utricle. This system sends information to the brain about what's going on around you. The semicircular canals contain fluid that moves around when you turn your head. These two sacs are sensitive to gravity and let the brain know whether you're standing up or lying down. Different parts of your body help you to understand movement like your eyes sense the world around you and see when and to where you're moving. Your skin also senses movement by the touch of the parts of the body that is touching the ground or any surface. And even your muscles and sensory receptors in your joints tell a lot about your movements. Basically, all the different systems in your body work together constantly to send information to your brain about the current state of motion you are in. And your brain being like a powerful supercomputer takes all these different pieces of information, forming it together like solving a puzzle and puts together an ongoing changing picture of what you are doing. Motion sickness occurs when your brain receives mixed signals. 
For example, let's say you're on a boat, trying to get through the travel time by diverting your mind and reading a book. Your inner ears will tell your brain that you're moving. However, your eyes that are deeply focused on that book and your muscles that are sitting tight on that seat may tell your brain you are still. This disconnection can lead you to be terribly seasick. Or say you're on a ride at the amusement park and it's spinning you around and flipping you over and keeping you upside down. Your eyes see one thing, your muscles feel another, and your inner ears sense something else. Altogether, your brain is unsure exactly what in the world you are up to, and sooner or later, again. Anyone can get motion sickness, and it's very common in children and pregnant women. But the only good thing about motion sickness is that at least it's not contagious. Or is it? Have you ever seen someone get carsick and then a minute later you're handed over a bag as well to barf your stomach out in? If you happen to get motion sickness frequently, here are a few tips to help ease the situation and make that road trip a better one. You might want to try focusing your eyes outside on objects in the distance rather than reading or looking at a screen. This way it would help your eyes to communicate the fact that you're on the move to your brain. Another tip is not to sit backwards. It can confuse your brain and make you feel worse. Your eyes and ears would sense movement from different directions, so it's better to sit facing forward. And lastly, try to reduce movement as much as possible. The worst seat choices are the seats at the front or back of a train, bus or boat. Right on top of the wheels. Those are the parts of the vehicle that tend to be the most bumpy. The middle of the vehicle tends to shake less than the outer edges, so if you tend to get sick easily, you might want to sit in the middle. If you're on public transport, getting sick and vomiting can be very embarrassing in front of a whole lot of people. So let me share with you the story of what Mrs. Davis did to rid her problem of motion sickness. She was on a cross-country bus trip, when she began to feel extremely queasy due to motion sickness. She got up and made her way to the restroom, but it was locked. She slowly made her way back to the seat and rested her head back to fight off all that nausea. But soon enough, she couldn't handle it anymore, and she puked on the lap of a man who had dozed off next to her. When the man woke up, he was shocked to find himself covered in barf. Mrs. Davis turned to him and said, There now, are you feeling better after that nap? And if nothing works, and you still feel super duper nauseous from motion sickness, try to stop your movement completely. If you don't stop the movement, there's no way your sickness is going to get better, and you'll have to go through with, yes, that. How was your last experience while traveling? Are you the one who gets motion sickness? Or are you the one to hand over the bag? Share with us your stories in the comments down below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe.